Okay, we're going to finish the fundamental counting principle 7.1 today. Although today we're actually not going to talk about the fundamental counting principle, we're going to talk about factorial notation. Um, so factorial notation is when something looks like this, like 4 exclamation mark. And we've talked about this before. I know we have, because I've made the silly joke before that 4 exclamation mark does not mean 4! Right. What it actually means is... Well, before I tell you what it means, let me tell you what factorial notation is. It is the product of consecutive natural numbers in decreasing order to the number one. Wow, kind of confusing. The product, we know what product means. Product means multiplying. Consecutive, that means one after the other after the other. Natural, you know what natural numbers are? They're the counting numbers, starting at one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No negatives, no fractions, no decimals like that and in de decreasing order to the number one. So for example, if we wanted to know what four factorial, that's how you say that, four factorial is, what you would do is you'd start at the four, and you'd multiply it by three, by two, by one, you go all the way down to one. And whatever that equals is your answer. Four times three is, 20, is 12, times two is 24, times one is 24. Three factorial means three times two times one. Three times two is six, times one is six. Two factorial means two times one which is 2. 1 factorial just means 1. So what does 0 factorial mean? I bet we're all guessing 0 right now, aren't we? But it's actually not. Can you figure out what it is? Look at the pattern here. When you go from 24 to 6, what do, what do you do to go from 24 to 6? Divide by 4. What do you do to go from 6 to 2? Divide by 3. From 2 to 1? Divide by 2. So what are you going to do here? Divide by 4, divide by 3, divide by 2, you're going to divide by 1. Whoops, divide by 1. Which means that 0 factorial also equals 1. Okay, that's something it's totally not obvious at all. You might need to put this into your memory banks, I guess. But besides that, you don't have to memorize what the answer to 4 factorial is. Just memorize how you take the factorial of something, which is no problem. This is the only weird one down here. Oh, by the way, why are we learning all this factorial stuff? Because when we solve the counting problems, the combinator combinatorics problems in the next couple section, we're going to be using factorials to solve them all. Oh, and one last thing. The symbolic way we represent f factorial notation, like the way we mathematically show what factorial notation is, it looks like this n factorial, so for example, the factorial of any number is equal to n times will then be the one smaller number. One smaller than n is n minus 1, and then one smaller than that, we'd multiply by one smaller than that, which is n minus 2, and then one smaller than that, which is n minus 3, and we keep going. When do we stop? Well, we stop once we get to 3 times 2 times 1. Now, if our factorial started at 3, if it was 3 factorial, of course, we'd just do this, 3 times 2 times 1. But if our factorial was 170, we go 170 times 169 times 168, 167, 165, 143, 2, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. That's how we show it symbolically, um, what factorial notation is. Okay, here we go. Let's solve some more difficult ones. 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial. Well, 7 factorial means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and then we could cross out the 1 and the 1, the 2 and the 2, the 3 and the 3, the 4 and the 4 and we end up with this is going to be our answer 7 times 6 times 5. But before I do that I just want to show you that you probably don't want to use the method I just showed here. What if this wasn't 7 factorial over 4 factorial? What if it was 107 factorial over 104 factorial? Believe it or not, that question is no more difficult, 107 factorial of 104 factorial. But it is more difficult if you're going to sit there and go 107 times 106 times 105 to 104, 103, 103, all the way down to 1. It's going to take forever. So another way you want to think of this is 7 factorial is the same as 7 times 6 times 5. Now, what's still left up here? What's still left up here is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is the same as 4 factorial. And then the bottom, just leave the 4 factorial. Why is that faster? Because when it's written like that, I can just get rid of those right away. So that's a better strategy, I would say. You don't have to do as much writing. Uh, okay, anyway, what we're left with is 7 times 6 times 5. The way I would do this is do 6 times 5 first, because that's 30, and then multiply it by 7, which is 210. There's your answer. Okay, next one. Oh, this is probably the hardest one on the page. Uh, 12 factorial, take away 9 factorial, all over 9 factorial. 
All right, if you have a plus or minus sign in there, chances are you're going to have to get everything to the same factorial. So for example, this 12 factorial, let's write that as 12 times 11 times 10 times what's still left? 9 factorial. Take away 9 factorial all over 9 factorial. Now you have two terms at the top. You have this 12, 11, 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 factorial and we also have a second term of 9 factorial. Do you see what you can do on the top now? You want to factor out a grace con factor. What's the grace con factor? 9 factorial. So you factor out 9 factorial. In the first term you're left with 12 times 11 times 10 minus what's left in the second term? 9 factorial times what equals 9 factorial? 1 all over 9 factorial. Hey, nice. What do we get to do now? Cancel the 9 factorials left out. So all we have to do to get an answer is 12 times 11 times 10 and then subtract 1 from that answer. Well, 12 times 11 is 132 and times 10 you just add a 0. So 1320 and we're going to take away 1 from that. Our answer is 1319. Okay, next one, 10 factorial times 3 times fac 3 factorial over 9 factorial times 5 factorial. Okay, again, what you want to try to do is get them to be the same factorial. So I see this 10 and 9. Well, chances are what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 10 times 9 factorial, right, over 9 factorial, because we know those are going to cancel. Now, what are you going to do with these two terms, the 5 factorial and the 3 factorial? Well, it's the 5 factorial you want to bring down to 5 times 4 times 3 factorial and leave the 3 factorial on top because then you'll be able to cancel that up. So again, what I'm going to cancel is the 9 factorial on top and bottom and the 3 factorial on top and bottom. So all we're left with is 10 on the top, 5 times 4 on the bottom is 20, and 10 divided by 20 is 1 half or 0 0.5 if you want, either way. Next page. Okay, sometimes you have um, variables in your um, factorial questions. So n plus 2 factorial. All right, well, let's write a few of the terms out. The first term would be n plus 2. Then we want to multiply that by 1 less than n plus 2. What's 1 less than n plus 2? n plus 1. Then we want to multiply that by 1 less than n plus 1. What's 1 less than that? n. Okay, this is looking promising because we have an n on the bottom, but it's not an n factorial, it's just an n. So maybe we should go one more. What's 1 less than n? n minus 1. And then we'd want to go n minus 2, n minus 3, but instead why don't we just do n minus 1 factorial. This is going to work out great. On the bottom we have n and we have n minus 1 factorial. Oh, we can cancel the n's out. We can call the, cancel the n minus 1 factorials out. What we're left with is n plus 2, n plus 1. Depending on the type of question, you can just leave it like that, or maybe you need to um, expand it, mountains and valleys, and get n squared plus 3n plus 2, but either one of these answers is fine. Okay, the next one looks a little strange. You have an n factorial squared. I hope you can see. You can hardly see it here, but it's an n factorial squared. So uh, on the bottom, let's deal with that first. On the bottom, you have n factorial times n factorial, right? That's what something squared means, multiplied by itself. So n factorial squared, n factorial times n factorial. Okay, so on the top, the numerator, we have n plus 2 factorial. Well, let's start writing some of the terms. It'd be n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n times n. Oh, it, from this point on, it, what's left is n factorial, right? So that's going to work out fine. And then the second one, we have n plus 1 and the next one is n, so again, you could rewrite the rest as n factorial. Now you have your two n factorials that will cancel, 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 cancel. You're left with n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n plus 1, or n plus 1 squared. Again, you could expand that all out, but I think that's a bit of a waste of time. This is fine right there. There's your answer. Uh, all right, now, the last two questions here, we're going to solve equations uh, that have factorials in them. So we start by doing the same sort of process we were just doing. We look on the left hand side here and n factorial is the same as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and we can put the factorial sign on, right? Because the next one's n minus 3, n minus 4, n minus 5 goes forever. Okay, on the bottom we have the n minus 2 factorial as well, so that's great. That'll cancel out and this equals 42. So we cancel out those 
we are left with n, n minus 1 equals 42. Hey, welcome to grade 11 math pre-calculus. This is going to be a, a quadratic equation once you multiply the n through. What do you do when you have a quadratic equation? Make it equal to 0, so bring the 42 over. Now we try to factor. Uh, two numbers that multiply to 42 and subtract to 1 are 7 and 1, or 6, sorry. And um, so your answers are either the first bracket equals 0 or the second bracket equals 0. It's either 7 or negative 6. Are we done? No, we're not. When we do factorial questions, you have to be prepared to reject answers. Which sort of answers can you reject or do you reject? You must reject uh, negatives. Remember, it's only natural numbers that work. Fractions. Decimals can't have any of these things. It has to be natural numbers. One, two, three, four. So, for example, now you should check because depending on what the question was up here, it might turn a negative into a positive. Like if it said, uh, if the thing said n plus 8 uh, uh, factorial and you had negative 6, that would be okay because negative 6 plus 8 is 2 and you can take the factorial of 2. See what I mean? But when you check this, if you put 7 in here, you get 7 factorial. I'll just write down what you get. You get 7 factorial over 7 minus 2 is 5 factorial. Yeah, those are both good. Those are both natural numbers, so that works. But when you put negative 6 in there, you get negative 6 factorial. Well, that doesn't work already. I already know the answer is wrong. By the way, if you want to check this answer out, it would be 7 times 6 times 5 factorial all over 5 factorial. The 5 factorials would cancel out. You'd be left with 7 times 6, which is 42, so you know you got the answer right. You don't need to check that whole answer, though it's good to make sure you got the right answer, but you do need to reject any um, answers that uh, result in a negative factorial. Okay, last one, n plus 2 factorial, so let's start there, and it looks like we have to go n plus 2, next one would be n plus 1, better keep going, next one would be n, next one would be n minus 1, and now we'll put the factorial on because we have an n minus 1 factorial on the bottom equals 24 n plus 1. So we can uh, cancel out the n minus 1 factorial. And you see you also have an n plus 1 on both sides. So you can also uh, cancel out the n plus 1 on the left and the n plus 1 on the right. Divide both sides by n plus 1, they're gone. So what you're left with is uh, n plus 2 times n equals 24. Oh, it's another grade 11 quadratic question. Uh, we're going to multiply this doing mountains. I guess we're doing backward mountains here or something. doesn't matter the order you multiply in, right? So n times n is n squared. 2 times n is 2n. Move the 24 over, you get minus 24 equals 0. Two numbers that multiply 24 and subtract to 2 are 6 and 4. So our n values are negative 6 and 4. Now we need to check to make sure they work. If we put negative 6 in here, you get negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 factorial. Can't do that, so this one's gone. Uh, let's put 4 into these. You get 4 plus 2 is 6 factorial. 4 minus 1 is 3 factorial. And we're saying that equals 24 times 4 plus 1 is just 5. Again, you don't have to check this if you don't want to. We know that the factorials are correct because they have positives in there. You could stop right now, but I like to be safe with my answers. So I'm going to check it out. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial all over 3 factorial. Those are gone. So we're left with 6 times 5 times 4. 6 times 5 is 30 times 4 is 120 on this side. On the other side, 24 times 5 is 120. We're done. We got it right. All right, that's factorial. Learn it and learn it well because for the next few classes, uh, we're going to use lots of factorial notation. Okay, another quick one for you. I hope you're enjoying these uh, short videos to end the year.